Well, while that's happening, we can think about how we open this one up. Like, hey, haven't seen us in a while, or I don't know. We're surviving the Minnesota winter. Yeah, it's been a while. It's uh, it's in the winter here, middle of February. Um, we made some sweatshirts. Why? Oh, you're not. True. You're not, not wearing, even wearing mine. Yeah, you're not wearing your shirt. Do I need to go change? No, it's fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> I'm uh, sporting the Blaine hockey sweatshirt. Yeah, which is probably um, we could probably get into that. That's one big reason why we haven't produced any videos or anything. Uh, this is, you're looking at the manager of one of our kids' hockey teams, and I coach on both oh. of them. Yeah, so that's taken up a lot of our time. Uh, but we had a really busy summer, really busy, and it was a lot of fun, I like to think. It was fun. Oh, yeah, we got big plans for this summer. But we thought we would uh, share some of the stuff we did last summer. Uh, so we started, uh, I think the, probably the last like kind of trip video we did was maybe my hockey tournament in March, but then we, we started out with a little trip to Wisconsin over Memorial, is it Memorial Day? Is yep. that in the spring? Yep. Right. Uh, we went to a National Forest Service campground in Wisconsin and they are absolutely beautiful there. I have to tell you, I there's a couple of good ones in Minnesota, but Wisconsin has some great National Forest campgrounds just in the middle of nowhere on lakes, they're beautiful. We went to two, uh, Day Lake, uh, Jen was not there with us. She was, I think her and Levi stayed home and did something. We were decluttering the house. That's right. Uh, I took the other kids out there and there was a ton of walking trails. We, I think we walked every single mile that we could and then some. Uh, there's a great little overlook on uh, Day Lake there. And uh, that was just a great, great trip. There was tons of places. I wasn't even sure if we were going to be able to get into one because we didn't plan it out <laughs> well it's we kinda... really tough for me <laughs> i know and then on that same trip we only stayed there for two days and then we went to moose lake campground and that one was a little sketchy because we had to go over some bridges that i had to do the tons to pounds conversion to see if our bus could go over it <laughs> that was a great little campground too we barely fit into a spot there were some other fifth wheels there um not quite as much to do but it was a lot of fun i want to say amelia learned to ride her bike there my favorite part of that trip, and I wasn't there, but... What? <laughs> How was your favorite part? You weren't even there. <laughs> but the kids, Sean and the kids painted rocks while they were gone. And they the goal was to, like, paint some pretty rocks and leave them for other people to find. And he let the kids bring some home. And Amelia came in, and she was so excited. She and Lucy were both showing me what they had painted, and Amelia, the last one she showed me, she pulls out this thing and she's like, what do you think it is? And I said, I have no idea. It was painted red with like some black spots on it. Um, and she had the biggest grin on her face and she's like, it's meat. <laughs> so, meat for a lion and since a lion's a predator. So that was my favorite part. And I wasn't there, but. It was funny. That was good. That and was she good. still has it. It's in her desk, um, in her room. That technically wasn't the summer. I counted our summer when the kids got out of school. And I think we figured out, I have written down here, but I know you did a Facebook post to our friends about it. How many miles did we put on? I, I have just well over 3,000 miles and we hit five states. Sound yeah. about right? Yeah, yeah Minnesota, was, obviously. Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, Indiana. That's our five. Yeah, that's five. So our first, or then our next one as a full family was to Blue Mound State Park. Uh, I believe funny. that, is that, or wait, is Blue Mound different than Lindbergh? Yes. Okay, we had another trip, we had another stop in there I totally forgot about. All right, Those Blue Mound two is different. different. trips. Those are two different trips? Yeah. Oh, okay. The, Lin <laughs> the Lindbergh Which one did State we do Park first? was over the 4th of July. Um, Blue Mound State Park was first. We left the day that the kids, the first full day the kids were out of school. 
And we took off from there and we went to the Laura Ingalls Wilder Museum. Yes. Um, which for me was really cool because I read all the books as a kid. I loved watching Little House on the Prairie. Um, and so getting to go and explore was really cool. Uh, with our kids, that was, we learned that the museums are really hard unless they are uh, guided tours because um, there was nothing to kind of occupy their time. And the Laura Ingalls Wilder Museum was a lot of reading. Like that one had posters and different things on the walls. And um, with four kids running around, it was really tough to take the time to read all their information. Uh, but the room that I thought was cool there was they had one like interactive room where you could pretend to be the grocer or the mail person um, and sort the mail into the things. And, into the mailboxes but it was a cool museum i thought but what i really liked there was the uh in that same exhibit they also had a uh period correct printing press mm -hmm. and they had all the stuff for doing uh printing press at the time and uh i do a lot of graphic design work as uh, my real job and uh so you get to see what, if anybody else is a graphic designer, you understand what leading it means. Well, there they actually had the pieces of lead. And what leading is, is the spacing in between your rows or your, uh, your yeah, your rows on, in a typed page. So more leading means more spaced. You know, I don't know. If teachers say they want something double spaced, really they mean they want a lot of leading. And then we went through a little town called Tracy and we found a really cool train museum that was closed. And so we stopped there for a little bit. Yeah, that was a lot of fun, too. And then we went to Blue Mound State Park, and we got there in time for dinner. And the kids, there was, like, some rock formations mm -hmm. in one of the hills. And um, so the kids had a ton of fun. There's a lot of good hiking trails there. We didn't yeah. do too many of them. It was really hot. It was hot. And we did not bring a lot of uh, portable water. I think that was the issue. And we might have had some cranky kids issue too or, but sorry. that wasn't the end of the trip then on the way back there was a train museum that i had found that looked really interesting called the endoline railway museum right and that was cool because that was a guided tour you can do a self tour the guided tour was way more interesting the kids loved learning about the hobo language i loved learning about the hobo <laughs> language um I and just getting to see up close and like all the different parts of the train and how it worked and getting to walk through some of the train cars and explore. Uh, but it also had like one of the turntables that was cool. Um, right. They turned and no, they didn't the turn main, a train. No, they, they turned us. Yes. But one of the turntables. Yeah. Um, and didn't you say it was like one of the last functioning ones in its, ex in its original location. And then we went to the Shell's Brewery on the way home. See, there's all kinds um, of things and I don't remember about that one. <laughs> and so that one, um, the kids liked because you got to test the 1919 root beer at the end. Uh, and then what animal was outside that they were fascinated? Pe the peacocks. The peacocks. They were super mm -hmm. fascinated with them. And also, Sean drove down the road that said, like, no buses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it's always an adventure. So, he got down there. We weren't sure how we were going to turn around to get back out of there. And so, sometimes we I just out. pretend I'm not with the bus. Because <laughs> it's embarrassing. Next one. Is this the 4th of July trip? Yes. This, we're now we're at 4th of, 4th of July. July. <laughs> okay. And I had wanted to go up to uh, the Cass Lake Bemidji area. I think this was one that I wanted to do as because I remember growing up there and going to uh, carnival and fireworks display and they do their fireworks actually on the water. It's really, really nice. Uh, so we ended up staying at the Cass Lake uh, National Forest Service campground, I believe. And we stayed, I think, in, in the boondocking sites, which you can actually not do anymore, which kind of stinks. I really like the spot we were at. Uh, we did have to run our generator some because we did we were shaded. We really couldn't get much solar at the time, but we were right on the water. Uh, there was fish out there, crayfish, 
all kinds of stuff. Dog could go and swim in the water. Kids did. Um, I thought it was a really nice site. They had a great visitor center with interactive things for the kids to do. Uh, What's the pie kind? There was a duck swimming. Like set up for Dad, Mr. Set up Beaver came up from his desk. Hi, yeah. ah, my name's Mr. Oh. Beaver. So yeah, we had a we had a good time there. Um, and I think getting back to that, we didn't plan things out all the time. Yes. We were left having to kind of, uh, wing you know, it. yeah, wing it, make do with a, a spot for a couple days at yeah. that Cass Lake Loop. And then we did a couple more days at Charles Lindbergh State Park to kind of make it work where we couldn't find one stay to span the entire 4th of July. Uh, we were not holiday. on top of it. These sites book out six months in advance. And so getting something over the 4th of July was um, was pretty hard. So Charles Lindbergh State Park, the sites, again, we were in a boondocking, a uh, no hookup site, uh, mostly made for uh, travel trailers, pop-ups. But let me tell you, we got this bus in the spot. And it's it was rainy. And then it so rained. It was, it was muddy. And I was actually quite nervous that we were going to get stuck in this spot. We didn't get stuck on that spot. <laughs> we saved that for later. Yeah. You'll summer. find out about that. Keep keep watching because let me tell you, we do get stuck. We went to the Charles Lindbergh estate. Yes. Uh, I believe it's one, one of the houses he stayed in as a child. And it was a guided tour with, what do they call it? Like period actors? Yes. Highly they, recommend it. They, as far as they were concerned, they were living in the 1800s or whatever that was. I think. Sure. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, well, early 1900s because they had a car. That one was one we walked into and um, you could pay for the, the guided tour, which is what we were going to do. But once a month they do um, like the char the full character tour uh, at no extra charge. We also went on a nature walk while we were there. Was it my, my nature walk? Yes. <laughs> Um, it, it's kind of one of those things that we're on these bus trips, you see all sides of everybody, the good, the bad, the fun and adventure, the just absolute pure frustration. And on this nature walk, we were following trails that we had been told, um, because of the heavy rains that some of the trails were, um, very muddy and, um, I don't remember being that bad. There was one spot in particular that I think a kid or two lost a shoe oh. and we had to like dig it out and or like scoop it out. And there was. Yeah, I think you're right. No frustration way. there. But we also didn't use bug spray. And because it had been wet, the mosquitoes were awful. It was a very heated nature walk. Um, yeah. Yeah, it so. was. But I don't know. I, I've it come didn't to... seem to bother him <laughs> at all. Uh, I think, I don't know. They just don't like me. Mosquito said us. In camping and doing these trips, I've come to really enjoy the hiking and the walking and the exploring and the doing that stuff. To tell you the truth, I, a campsite that has, or campground that has a couple of miles of walking or hiking trails is a plus for me. I really like that. If you can guarantee me no snakes. Can't do that. No mosquitoes. Can't do that. I would thoroughly enjoy it. <laughs> I don't think we're out of the Lindbergh story yet. We should also note that we travel with all of our pets. Oh, yes. Yes. Four, four cats, uh, some of varying degrees of intelligence, and one dog. <laughs> and we have one cat that likes to get out this window over here. And he got out of it while we were hooking up to leave. What's up? Oh, crap. How'd... Oh, geez. Mom is out did traveling with pets is always fun uh and sometimes uh, to make it more fun while we're driving down the road they sit in the windowsill and so as we're going through small towns and people are crossing the road they can see all the animals lined up in the window yeah that... we're that weird animal family uh and then we started in august with our kind of our grand finale for the summer which is we decided to go around, Lake yeah, a loop all the way around Lake Michigan. Yep. And 
I really, really enjoyed it. That was a lot of fun. And I, I think it was a highlight of everybody's summer. I think so. I, I definitely think so. I think, you know, the kids, they, they like their video games and that time and all that and their friends. And so they're missing that a little bit, but I do think they enjoyed it. Everyone found something to enjoy. Yes. Yeah, I tried to make it fun. I actually went to the library and found a book that was called, like, Off the Beaten Path in Wisconsin to try and find um, just different things that are really neat about the state. And um, so that kind of kicked off our trip in, is it Manitowoc? I have a brother-in-law who is from Wisconsin. He told me the city name is called Manitowoc. Manitowoc. Okay. I think. Sorry. Eric, Eric if you're watching... <laughs> I hope that's right. Yeah, that's where we went first. And if I recall, we ended up boondocking in the fairgrounds parking lot. Yep. They do offer hookups, I think, for $20 a night. But we got there at like 1 in the morning. And we were going to be gone by uh, 8 or 9 in the morning. Yeah. So we just basically used it as a place to park. Um, it was one of those things where we planned this trip. Um so last minute getting spots was hard but we also didn't know how much time we wanted to travel yeah. around to the different places and so um it was hard to judge like where to find the different campgrounds so we did some boondocking along the way mm -hmm. but one of the things i guess i want to talk about in the manitowoc place was uh they had a world war ii submarine oh. and a some kind of maritime museum there as well that was very, very interesting. Uh, they actually had a cutaway version of a wood boat from, I don't know when, but lo lots of interactive stuff to go through. But the guided submarine tour was a highlight. They actually built yeah. World War II submarines there. Yeah, I found that in that book that I went through. Good job. Good job. After that, we had an engagement uh, or kind of a, a, a spot that we needed one night at on the other side of Michigan, the lo lower part of Michigan. So we needed to get all the way around the UP, I think in about a day. And we had a couple of good spots or good stops there, but I really feel like we rushed it. Absolutely. It was so beautiful when we, the, the parts we did go through, uh, during the day, but we went through way too much of it at night. Uh, we ended up stopping at a rest stop on highway two near the top of Lake Michigan. Maybe some of you are familiar with it. Uh, it was absolutely beautiful. There was a there was a, a walk out onto a, like a beach area, like right off the rest stop. But that was a great stop. We we enjoyed that in the UP. But then we kind of made a beeline all the way to the Mackinac Bridge. That was just a surreal experience driving a bus into the clouds, almost at least to me. And where we were headed to was actually somebody I met on uh, a Facebook bus conversion group. Uh, he had a boondockers welcome property or spot on his property and he invited us to stay there and uh, super great guy really great guy uh, and he knows all the reasons why <laughs> <laughs> um uh, yeah we'll just leave it we will we'll leave that at that there are some things that i might get to do later we had a great time there we went to the beach there i really love beaches at almost every one of our stops we tried to go to the beach or do something on the water yeah. um i think that's so fun uh i think our next stop was Mir State Park. So this is where I feel like it starts getting an adventure or memories or I don't know. <laughs> we went to Mir State Park in Michigan. It was by far our favorite stop it, along this, like as far as beaches went. Mm -hmm. it, it would have fit right in as uh, Clearwater Beach in Florida. Yeah. There was waves just like the ocean. Uh, the beach was just pristine and beautiful. There was a lot of sand. Our campsite had a lot of sand, a little bit more than I thought. We, when we were looking at the campsite, it said it's 65 feet long. No, what? not that one. Not that one? No, not that one. I was pretty sure one of them. Okay. Oh, not that one. That was one that we were trying to find a campsite, and the bus is, you know, Sean will say the bus is 40, mm -hmm. but I could fit into a 35. <laughs> well, you can't, because the back end hangs off a little bit. Yes. So this one was, I think, a 30 between a 35 and a 40 that's really all that should have gone in it was it like a 30 or 35 at the most well yes because there was like a, a beam wall in the back i mean there's mm -hmm. like a whole mm -hmm. sand pit and then a beam wall long story short here uh i managed to get the bus stuck 
and the entirety of this park, they come out to see what is this idiot from Minnesota doing with this giant bus here. Had it been gravel, I think we could have parked in sideways and it would have fit. Yeah. But the cement pad didn't go. Yeah, basically over just one one of the wheels went off of the concrete or the the asphalt pad and uh and at the same time the back end got hung up uh on the sand and so the weight of the bus was partially being supported by the wheels and also by the i think by the oil pan on the engine even and so i knew i couldn't shut the bus off because if we did the air would release from the suspension and then it would put pressure on the engine and the oil pan and all that and i didn't want to do that so it we had to run it while we dug it out and some people there helped us with we were the talk of the town i mean <laughs> yep it was really hard and during this whole extravaganza we've got the dog who is barking at everybody because we won't let her out we've got two cats that somehow managed to escape the bus one right. went under our bus one went under someone else's camper so we're chasing that cat through the campground or right, one other thing <laughs> Uh, at that point, someone used the bathroom or washed their hands, and I found out that our black tank was full. And Super our funny. my black tank overflow vent is right next to where it was uh, the wheel was. And uh, I don't know. It was a, such an interesting afternoon, but I will say. The people there were amazing. They became yeah. like family, all working together. But there was uh, so much cheering, I mean, by everyone, when yeah. we finally were able to get out. We even made the most that night. We watched the sunset. Yes. Um, we lost know, the cat again because it ran right. out of the bus again in the dark, and that was fun. The sunsets there are were just beautiful. It, it yes. reminded me of like being on the Gulf side of Florida, where you get to watch the sun go into the ocean. Except this time, it was Lake Michigan. Yeah, it uh, was super cool. Honestly, it is a campground that I would absolutely go back to um, in a site fitted uh -huh. for us, like. They do have um, pull through sites and, and things. They do, but we were just for us. We were too late to the party to uh -huh. book campsites. And that was one that we couldn't even get into for more than one night. Um and the the site that we tried to fit into was one of the only sites they had available. So yeah. we were willing to try and make it work. Um but I would totally do it again. And honestly, that was the kids' favorite beach. Even going there for the day and then staying at a rest stop, like making that a complete morning yes. to evening day you can do that there they have rv spots in the day use parking lot yes um that's totally fine so if you've never been there go check it out yeah then uh we went to we kept coming south and we made it to silver lake state park yep um we did some dune rides there that um, was so cool we had a great we had a great spot there an rv spot that Pull one through. was like 65 feet long it was luxurious full <laughs> hookups everything it was great <laughs> There was a couple of beaches there we went to that were really nice. Uh, I think you were there. They actually had a river that came out into the lake. Yes. And so it kind of had this like natural lazy river thing that was a lot of fun to play in. Anything else on that one? I'm trying to think. I don't think so. And then I think our plan was to go to the was the Indiana Dune State Park. We went yes. there. Beautiful beach, I would say, but a little weird on the rules. Yes. First off, there was no spots available when we got there. No. Uh, so we were just going to go to the beach and make the best of it. Uh, and then when we got there, we found out you can only, you can't go in the water uh, if... If there's no lifeguard. Yeah. If there's no lifeguard, you can't go in the water and at all. swimming it, closed at five. Yeah. And it was after five when we got there. Yep. And so I'm not even sure why they let us in other than they probably were laughing because we had to pay for the wow. for the day ticket Yeah. to get in to find out that we couldn't swim and they were remodeling parts. The beach was beautiful. It um, was. I think it would have been another fun beach, but um, they would not allow the kids to swim. And even when the lifeguards were there, you couldn't go past waist deep. Uh, yes. I have to think they were worried about riptides uh, because... That's at the southern end of Lake Michigan, and you can have the waves traveling the entire length of it, and you can get, probably get some serious surf down there. There wasn't really anything there, and I mean, we've been to the ocean before where 
that's a real concern. We are we were on the Atlantic side of Florida a couple of years ago, um, where there was like six foot waves, and I don't know. Anyway, um, we enjoyed that for what it was. But the next couple of days of our trip were a little, uh, I don't know. We were, we kind of felt homeless. I think. Yeah, we didn't have anywhere to go, nowhere to be. We couldn't really find anything to do because after the the Indiana Dunes State Park. The beaches changed from being like that super nice sand. Um, a little more rocks and yeah, yeah. There's more. The beaches are definitely better on the eastern side of Lake Michigan. Yeah. So then we worked our way through Chicago and all that. Chicago's notorious construction. I don't know. I thought it'd be fun. We did go through at night. It was beautiful. Ever the city was lit up. But I don't need to do that again. And then we, we, went, we went to Kenosha. Yes. Wisconsin. Yep. So now we're, we've come all the way back around. We're at Kenosha, Wisconsin. And uh, we ended up finding a little place to eat that Jen, you had found. It was called like Ron's Place. Um, again, I found that in that book. Um, it was a really, it was a good place to eat. Yeah. They had good fried pickles, like pickle yep. fries. They were excellent. The and burgers then, were excellent. Um and then they had just had a little place like downtown where we could park and hop on the trolley. So the kids and I um, rode the trolley around town a couple of times. And um, yeah, and then I, I got some work done and uh, I think we uh, made our way to, we were heading to Wisconsin Dells. That was kind of going to be our ending spot. We were going to spend a week there. And I think we spent one more night at a rest stop. Yes. And I happened to find, like, because we still had some time to kill, so I was Googling, like, what's fun to do around, I don't even remember what town we stayed in, but um, the Jelly Belly Factory came Uh, up. Right. And I was like, let's go take this Jelly Belly tour, and of course the kids are like, we don't even like Jelly Bellies, and I was like, I don't either, but I think it'll be fun. And in the end, we actually learned that we all really like Jelly Bellies, given the right kind yeah but the tour was fun because they had some interactive hands-on like you could smell different things you could see what they tasted like at Mm -hmm. various making stages and then you rode in these little trolley cars and um and it was i don't know it was a ton of fun and then they have like a sample station where you could go try any kind of jelly belly that they made yeah but yeah so we left there with um tons of jelly beans and Okay. And in the end, like, all the kids were like, thank you for bringing us here, because it was fun. Yep. So, as much as, you know, it might seem like some of our tours or stops are a struggle, we do genuinely have several stops where all the kids are very grateful. Yeah. At least I hope that in 10, 15 years, whatever, they say, oh, those trips are the best. Hopefully it's yeah. not... Oh, those are the worst. I hope. <laughs> and you know what? It's yeah. Uh, some of the hardest days that we've had in travel have brought some of the best memories. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's true. Like over the past few years, mm-hmm. where some of the times where we just didn't have things planned out and things um, just kind of happened, and we made do. They were. They're some of the best stories and the fondest memories. Yeah, I agree. So I'm learning to not be such a planner. Um, so I guess, uh, yeah, then we ended up, our total trip was 17 days, I think, right? Yep. And I think there's definitely a point at which it kind of starts to become normal. Yes. We kind of learned how to give each other a little bit of space so yep. that we didn't get on everybody's nerves um because there were plenty of those moments too along the way but mm-hmm. that's true even if we stay home so yep for as much as they thought they were going to hate being gone for two weeks they absolutely loved that trip mm-hmm. so. so we do have some plans for this summer and uh maybe even some things coming up here but maybe we'll save that for another one this one's getting pretty long for a video um, I don't know if you have any other, if you have any questions, comments about anything 
that uh, that we did saw whatever or anything about our RV and any of the things that we do, feel free to leave a comment, uh, even if it's not related to this necessarily. Point you in the right, in the right direction. And uh, I think that's it. Do you have anything else? One thing that I do that um, is kind of fun is I just keep a notebook um, and I journal all our trips. And so I start off with, this is actually 2017, this is our first year. Um, I list all the different trips that we've gone and some of the different highlights of the trip. And then each trip gets a page or page pages. Um, and I kind of talk more in detail of what we've done, where we stayed. I've tried to keep track of which campgrounds we've stayed at and, um, site numbers if possible, because if we really like them, it would give us a chance to go back. And so I just spend a little bit more time writing about the different trips. And then at the end, um, I have a list. Um, I list out each of the four kids and ask them, what was your favorite part of this trip? And sometimes, especially the longer trips, I have to kind of remind them like, well, we went to this place and that place. And, you know, these are the different things we did. And sometimes they're just quick and they know exactly what their favorite part was. Um, and then I also ask them what's their least favorite part, because if it's something that, um, that we can fix for the next trip to make it better, um, it's something we want to do. It's just, it's something fun that I hope, um, that someday that the kids will sit down and it will be a way to go back and look at the different trips we took and kind of reread some of the memories. Yeah. Um, because you're, you're never going to remember all the things that happened. And so, especially some of the, the harder days, like getting stuck in the sand or, um, just when things just don't go right, you just don't always remember those things or how you made the best of those things. And so it's just a fun, a fun thing I can do to, um, keep the memories alive. Well, all right. Well, I think that's everything, right? Got anything else? Nope, that's it. All right. Bye. Bye.